If you clicked on the video and saw the title, then you answered the question. Because everyone who saw the title immediately thought of someone, whether it be someone from the 90s like Tupac or a newer rapper like Kendrick Lamar, that person has made such an impression on rap fans that they were the first person you thought of when I even mentioned rap legends. After listening to what a lot of people consider to be rap legends, I've come to find that most of these people share a lot of traits, not musically, but in the way that their album is packaged. In fact, I've come up with my own system of identifying rap legends in just four easy steps. First things first, here's a quick disclaimer. Who I consider to be a rap legend is absolutely an opinion, but there are some people who are indisputably in this category, like the previously mentioned Tupac. But because I wasn't even alive then, I'm going to talk about more recent rappers who have had a much bigger impact on my life and who I have seen the effects of overall. Now back to the video. Whenever I go on TikTok or Instagram, there's always someone on my front page raking albums. Whether it be the overall best albums of all time, or best rap albums, there's always someone making me mad with their dumb opinions. It's become a big trend to rate albums from specific artists, and those are my personal favorites to watch. It's funny to see how much people's tastes differ, or to see how someone else received an album that you love. Unless your list looks like this. If your list looks like this, then do your save a favor and go fuck yourself. Anyways, what I'm really trying to say is this. The only way to really rate an artist's discography is if there are A, differences and changes made from album to album, or B, the album can be looked at as a whole entity. Let me explain what I mean. If I ask you to tell me what you like about the album To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, you might say, oh, it's a great album, it does a great job of mixing older genres of music with its classical flows and bars. But if I said to tell me about Cottonwood by Nelly Choppa, you could probably say, which songs are on that? Because unlike T-Pab, Cottonwood doesn't flow and connect each song like a good album does. It's more of just a collection of songs mushed together with a title on it. With t pab there's a narrative, there's a reason and a purpose for the songs to be in the order that they are, there's a purpose for the project to exist, but with Cottonwood, Enelie Choppa essentially just made songs and released them at once, there's no connection between each track. So that's step number one of identifying rap legends. Rap legends release albums, rappers release collections of songs. Right now on the screen is every Kanye West album cover. Each cover is unique from the last, with the exception of his first three albums which all feature the iconic bear. Now let's look at NBA Youngboy's album covers. Notice a bit of a difference? They're repetitive, cookie cutter, and they don't mean anything. Take Kanye's The Life of Pablo, for example. It's cryptic, it's artistic, and it makes the viewer think. Now look at All Youngboy 2 by NBA Youngboy. As I said before, it just gives the listener basic information on the artist and the album. Imagine if instead of the album cover for the life of Pablo, the cover was just a picture of Kanye at a press conference that just said his name in big text. It would be disappointing, especially because a lot of rappers use this style of cover, and it's just not something a rap legend would do. The best musical artists are those who can make an album based upon a creative idea and shape the music and the album around that. And at the end of the day, without a cover that reflects that idea, artists are already losing a big chunk of their audience. For example, yesterday I was scrolling through YouTube when I saw a new video by Anthony Fantano recommended on the homepage. The album he was covering caught my eye, not because of its title, not because I heard of the group, but the album cover was abstract and different and made me curious to listen to. And so I did and I loved it. Wicked City by Jockstrap was a great project. But the point of the story is that the album cover reflected the music, which is why it grabbed my attention in the first place. If the cover had looked something like this, then the odds are I wouldn't have batted an eye and I would have just kept scrolling. This step is simple. Go online and look at other rappers talk about their favorite artists or the people they're influenced by. 99% of the time it's someone that you know, and 99% of the time it's someone that wouldn't surprise you. For example, in a recent interview JPEG Mafia cited Yeezus as his biggest inspiration, which if you know JPEG Mafia's music makes perfect sense. Both share a similar experimental style that is unique to the both of them. In an interview from a few weeks ago, Freddie Gibbs talked about how Kendrick Lamar is the best rapper out right now, and how Kendrick is his only competition for album of the year. Once again, this shouldn't surprise people who listen to both artists, who both rely heavily on poetic lyricism. Even the rap legends are inspired by rap legends, like Talib Kweli, member of Blackstar, who has praised the likes of more underground legends such as MF Doom. But the point I'm trying to make is that these massive names in hip-hop, who have had millions of streams this year, learned what they did from other people. And influencing a new generation of artists is a massive sign that the person that created a record unique enough to change a generation of artists is a rap legend.
out. You don't need me to tell you how to identify an amazing and unique artist. Just by using your own brain, you, no matter how stupid, can definitely figure out who has reached legend status and who hasn't. You didn't need me to tell you that Kanye West and Kendrick Lamar are rap legends. Anyone who hasn't lived under a rock in the past 10 years would have guessed that. I just think that knowing how to identify someone of legendary status is important. That way the next time you find someone rising in the underground, you can invest in future stock of I knew that artist since he only had 10,000 plays on Spotify, or something snobby and stupid like that. But who am I to stop gatekeepers from gatekeeping? I'm just a guy who talks about music online. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the part where the video ends. Thank you.